Hey everybody, Chris Farad here, and uh, this is Frostpunk. Uh, the footage that you're about to watch is from a live stream that I did, uh, where I played Frostpunk for the very first time. I haven't finished it yet, and I'm going to continue playing on stream over the next couple of them, because this game is addicting. It's so addicting that it's like, oh, just one more day, or just one more night, or I just want to do this, or I just want to do that. And I love it. These guys, uh, 11-Bit Studios, they made this War of Mine, and there's a lot of stuff that carries over from that, but this is really a city builder... Uh, management game where it takes those tough decisions from this war of mine and puts it into this totally different world. And the way that you're building the cities is completely different, and I will go over that in this video as well. Uh, if you guys are interested in pre-ordering, uh, I will have a link where you can save 10%, and it will also help the channel as well. I'm working with uh, GOG on a lot of stuff, so there'll be more information uh, if you guys are into buying your games DRM-free from a really good company, GOG is the way to go. I'm a huge fan of theirs. Uh, I'll have a link below that you can check all that out. Uh, but otherwise, hopefully you enjoy, and I'll put these up in hour-long chunks uh, from the stream as we go. Thanks so much. Take care. All right. Let's rock and roll. So, please be aware this is a preview build, and as such, does not contain the full quality and content of the game. Things might change between here and release. Um... But the only thing that I will not be able to show you is, like, an opening cinematic, and that's just not even in here. So, yeah. How's the volume? I feel like it might be a bit loud. I'm going to turn her down just a tad. We'll see how that is. First time you ever heard about a Forbin? Wow, okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Sounds good? Yeah, I think, I think it was a bit loud. I got it down a bit. All right, so we're gonna start. Uh, we're gonna start a new home, and oh, there's so many like cool little touches that I want to show you guys. It's just oh, they're super smart with what they've done. I'm, I'm actually like, I'm pretty pumped to be starting a new game with you guys. Pretty pumped. Pretty pumped. Okay. Uh, still in early access, Surfy. No, this is like this is basically the full release. Uh, they might tweak things between here and, like, next week. Um, but this is basically everything. Alright. A new home. We fled from London and crossed the sea to reach the frozen north. On the way, our convoy was hit by a blizzard and scattered. A handful of us managed to reach the site of this generator, only to find it frozen solid and abandoned. Why is no one here? Did any of our people survive the blizzard? Are there any others out there? Whatever we do, we should expect the worst now that the world, as we know it, has crumbled. Alright. This reminds me of home when I was a young boy living in Regina, Saskatchewan. This is basically exactly where I lived. Fight the cold. We need to get the generator working. It provides heat and power to other buildings. Without it, we'll freeze to death, stockpile some coal, and start the generator. Alright. I'm gonna turn this up just a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna- I'm gonna pause the game and I'll give you like a quick, quick overview of everything that's going on on the screen here. Just so that you're not, um, totally lost. Alright. Uh, so this is like- this is our main jam. This is the generator. And if this fails, we're totally screwed. Uh, we need to power it with coal. Makes sense. Uh, there's different levels that we can upgrade it to kind of, like, expand, um, its influence of, of heat. There's, um, you can see this, like, heat map. Once we turn this on, this will be in, like, bright red. Um, and this will expand out slowly. Um, we currently have 80 homeless people, which is not great. And we have a couple of goals we need to do. Get some coal and activate the generator. So where do we get coal? Well, there's these random, uh like stockpiles out here. There's wood crates that we can break down for wood. There's steel wreckage we can break down for steel. Uh, and here's the coal that we can go and gather so we can power this thing. All right. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is just kind of follow along with what they're suggesting and, uh, and get some coal for the generator. So I'm going to throw my maximum number of workers. The way that you assign workers to different places is by... <laughs> Thank you so much, Big Red Dog. Appreciate that, buddy. Uh, is by clicking on the actual building or the stockpile. <laughs> I will give her. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Um, clicking on the stockpile or the building, and then you assign workers to it. So here we've assigned workers. 
Um, this one we could if we wanted to. We don't need steel just yet. Uh, but we definitely need to start gathering coal. Down here is like a little summary of um, workers, engineers, and children. So we can make some choices in the game with like, do we want to decide to put children to work? Or do we want to just like keep them safe in a shelter? And there's like little decisions like that um, that will cause people to have more or less discontent, more or less hope. And as those tooltips pop up for us, I'll review those so we get like a full summary of what's going on. Make sense? Okay. So, um, we've got 15 people on the coal pile. I have a whole bunch of extra workers, so we're just gonna slam everybody on coal, basically. And some of the wood crates. So let's do that. We have engineers. We have engineers as well. Oh, are you kidding? Nightrunner, thank you so much. That helps a lot. Thanks, guys. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, so essentially, do you condone child slavery or not? Yeah, you'll see. You'll see. You'll see. Uh, so watch this. Check this out. This is one of the coolest things, okay? You're going to notice these are all of our people. Um, it's 8 a.m. They're going to go out to work and check this out. Notice how they have to, like, plow through the snow and you can see, like, their tracks. Isn't that cool? I think it's so good. Um, we can activate the generator. We don't need to wait for it to get to 200. So we're gonna we're gonna turn this on now. It's gonna start using up the coal, but these guys are like gonna start bringing tons back. So you can see in here we've got a couple of different things going on. Um, we've got range settings. We've got the amount of steam that it produces. We can flip it into overdrive sometimes, and uh, when it gets really cold, that's probably a good time to do that. But when we do that. Uh, it builds up this like stress level and if it maxes out your generator can be destroyed and the game will end so that's pretty bad uh, You can also toggle this just like we could up here and you'll see like this building super hot and As you get progressively further away less and less hot, okay? So um, these guys are gonna stockpile coal. We'll we'll finish this when uh, uh, When they hit 200 which will happen You'll notice that I'll pause a lot. There's, um, there's, uh, like a scale up here that you can use. Here's, like, normal speed. You can go up to, like, super fast speed if you really want. Um, but early on, I want to make sure that we're using all of our workers, all of our engineers to just, like, gather stuff. And I think what I'm going to do is I'll maybe send out our engineers just to work this, just so they're in one place. And where else? We have frozen trees we could take down, but let's send the rest of our workers. Now everybody's out doing things, uh, and it should be okay. Uh, Whitman, we'll probably go for a few hours. Yeah, we'll go for a few hours. All right, so camera controls, pretty basic, W, A, S, and D, and you can, like, rotate things with uh, Q and E. Resources and workforce. So resource management is crucial to city survival. You need coal to power the generator. Wood and steel are necessary for construction and research. Steam cores are part of advanced buildings. Raw food is used to prepare food rations in the cookhouse. Later in the game, more types of resources may appear. All right, cool. Uh, most buildings require you to assign people to work there. Certain buildings only employ, only employ engineers, and others only employ workers. To assign people to work, click on a workplace and use the assignment panel. So you notice that I was already doing that with like some of the stockpile stuff. Uh, but when we build buildings as well, we have to go in and assign people to work there. So we start with 80 people, and later on we're gonna get um, we're gonna get an objective to build something to go and find more people, and that's how you really start to develop your city. Because if you build too much, you don't have the people to work in the places that you're building. It's not really that effective, right? Uh, temperature. So temperature inside a building depends on the power setting of the generator. If the building is in a heat zone, that building's insulation and the conditions... Or, sorry. Uh, depends on the power setter of the generator if the building is in a heat zone. That building's insulation and the conditions outside. So there's three things that impact the heat. There are six temperature levels. Uh, comfortable, livable, chilly, cold, very cold, and freezing. <laughs> so, like, you'll notice that majority of the time, we're at least chilly. You know? So this is basically just like back home. 
Keeping homes and workplaces as warm as possible helps prevent people from getting ill. Some workplaces might become inoperative if the temperature falls too low. If people get ill, you got to put them in the hospital. If they get super ill, you have to like maybe amputate stuff or make other decisions. And it's like can be very depressing. Can be very depressing. Can you make more generators? Uh, not that I know of. It's a great question. I only have about 30 minutes in the game. Um, and this is this is like a fresh start. So we're going to learn a bunch of stuff for the first time today. But um, we will. We will learn it. So down here we'll eventually get something that explains like discontent and uh, hope. But discontent being low, pretty good. Pretty good. Hope being there, not so bad considering that all these people are homeless. Um, so what we're going to want to do... I'm probably a little bit ahead of the uh, of the curve here, but uh, we definitely want people to be hunting and we definitely want people to be cooking So up in the right you'll notice that we have a hundred raw food and people will eat raw food if there's no food rations available, all right uh, If there's no food rations, they'll try and they'll do what they need to do to survive but if we cook like a cookhouse uh, we can prepare two food rations for every one raw food, which is way more effective, and people are happier. So, pretty important to get that cookhouse up and going. Uh, it only costs 20 wood to make. We're at 50, so we're going to rock and roll. Alright, we're going to start plopping these in here. Um, even though it's not like a goal yet, we're just going to do it because we want our people to be happy. Now, when we're placing stuff, I should explain this too. So you'll notice that there's like this this green ring and that means like you're totally fine to place it there everything's gonna work great yellow means you can place it there but there's a condition and in order to connect things to like your heat core you need to build roads to like push out and like let people move around and stuff um, so I could put this out here but it's not gonna do any good and then you could place like you could place it way out here but it would be a disaster some of these red things um, you can't place it there because it's reserved for uh, a special type of building that needs to gather that specific resource, right? Um, so yeah, that's how that works. Alright. We'll advance time a little bit here. Now, we get these little things that come up. Kind of, these, this is what really reminds me of uh, this war of mine. So, word of advice, workers are needed. There's so much to do and not enough hands to do it. A quick way of addressing this problem is to put our children to work. <laughs> okay. So this is this is actually pretty cool. This is pretty cool. All right. So um, every once in a while, we can go in here and we can make um, a new law. All right. This is called the Book of Laws. I'm going to take you through each of the ones that are uh, readily available. So they're recommending. You know what? Maybe we maybe we employ the children. We got a bunch of children just sitting around, not doing anything. Maybe we put them to work. We could put them in the safe jobs. You know, so at least there's something. Um, but what happens? So after we introduce this law, children can work in safe workplaces. So hope goes up like, you know, or uh, no, I miss, I misread that. Uh, children can work in safe workplaces, which is good because we're going to get uh, more production, right? On the downside, hope's going to fall because it's like, oh, we're going to put all our kids to work. That's bad news. And child workers can be injured. Which is also bad news. You know what I'm saying? So, it's it's just one of those things where, like... We gotta be careful. We gotta be careful with the decisions that we make. On the opposite side of that, we could do child shelters. And children would be safer if they stay in child shelters during the day. And they won't cause any mischief. Um, this is good because hope will rise. Providing all children with this place in a child shelter provides a permanent hope bonus. Okay? Uh... You will have to build the child shelter, though. So it's tough. Early on, it's like, yeah, we could probably use those children <laughs> to help us do things. Uh, there's also some other bills that we could pass. Uh, there's emergency shift. So after we do this, we can say, I want everybody to work for 24 hours. Right? Everybody's going to work. Uh, people get mad, but we get a lot of extra production because there's, like, basically hours of operation. Right? There's a fighting arena. Nothing relieves tension better than watching a few rounds of an all-out slugfest. Uh, evening bout will reduce discontent. Might not be terrible. Probably not a top priority to build, like, a fighting pit. You know what I mean? Khaleesi. I'm, I feel like I'm Khaleesi right there. That's... I feel like we're on the same page. Food additives. Uh, so we can add sawdust to make the meals more filling, but not exactly tasty. 
and people can get sick. So, not good. Uh, we can make soup with one of these laws. Uh, instead of full meals to feed more people with the same amount of raw food. Uh, hope falls, discontent rises, and eating soup can cause, can cause discontent. And then, uh, only a couple more in the first level. Radical treatment seems pretty good. Um, what this means is that when people get gravely ill, they'll be treated in medical posts. And, uh, people are, like, more hopeful because they're like, well, this is good. My guy, me, the, the mayor of this disaster, or whatever we want to call it, uh, this guy's nice, so I'm hopeful. However, 30% of the people that are gravely ill then, uh, will be left with, with as amputees. So, not amazing. Sustained life is decent. Uh, we won't cure the gravely ill, but we can at least keep them alive. We won't risk dangerous amputations with radical treatment. So, they'll be kept alive, and then if you can keep them alive long enough, you can build more advanced places to, like, make them recover. And then there's, like, a cemetery. I mean, for the dead. And or corpse disposal. Also for the dead. Makes sense? So, like, I... I think... Safe jobs isn't terrible. It's not terrible. Especially early. I think, like, productivity-wise, this is good. I think eventually we... I don't know if this is an either-or scenario. I don't know if we can, like, only pass safe jobs and then we cannot pass shelters. But I think... I think we're gonna put the kids to work right now. Done. So now... <laughs> so now, uh, our children can work. You'll notice down here, these are no longer prohibited. The children were prohibited before, now they're not. And the, some of these guys are not happy. Kids should be learning, not working. We toil all day and now the kids have to work too. Well, you guys want to die or not? You know what I'm saying? Um... We should probably put the kids to work on... I think, like, some of the wood, maybe. We could put them out here. 15 kids on this wood pile. Not bad. Not bad. Now, let me show you some other stuff. Check this out. So if we click on any of these individuals, we have information on, like, uh, where they live, where they work, uh, what their name is, some of, like, their, their problems, what they're doing at the moment, uh, what their health is like, who they're married to, and who their kids are. <laughs> like, it's pretty crazy. Uh, as far as I can tell, we can't rename these. But, like, how cool would that be? How cool would that be if you could rename all the people in here? So if I wanted to find his spouse, so he's working at the coal pile, she's working in the wood crates, and then their kid is working at the wood crates that we just assigned. So just saying. <laughs> I'm not- I'm not a- I'm not pro-child labor generally, but I think for right now it's like survive at all costs. I think it's not bad. Okay, um... I didn't... Yeah, okay, let's- let's wait for this to do its thing. Food and hunger. Alright. So, uh, the cookhouse prepares meals for people. It produces two food rations from one unit of raw food. Raw food is prohibited by hunters and hothouses and is sometimes found by scouts during their exploration. Uh, when there are no food rations to be had, people start eating the raw food. Fair enough. So obviously, if we can get up to, like, a hothouse or, um... Uh... Oh, sorry. Yeah, no, we're good. Hunter's Hut, hothouse, cookhouse, we're good. We're good, we're good. So we are going to be building a cookhouse. I think what I need to do is, uh... There is a different time frame where people will work, uh, on building stuff compared to their normal job. Um, but I might want to unassign some people. I think we'll wait until we at least get the full stockpile. You know? Anime, are you wearing the exact same flannel shirt right now? That's impressive. Does that make sense, guys, so far? Have I explained everything clearly enough? I think this won't build because we don't have any workers available to do it. Um... Let me take this off and see if they'll go and start working on this. Yeah. See, they're going to the, the building site now, those five that we just turned off there. Flannel bros. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, Philippe, what's up, man? Oh, Deadput, are you wearing the same shirt too? Wow. 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 
All right. The generator hums with reassuring warmth. We shouldn't take it for granted. If the generator goes down, the city dies. Be mindful of coal reserves. Now, food. There'll be no city if we starve to death. Secure a way to provide raw food and build a cookhouse to prepare meals. Which, we're already, like, one step ahead there. Um, we also need to secure a raw food supply. So we need to get the uh, hunter's hut going. So we can throw that up. Construction. So here we go. You can speed up time by clicking the game speed buttons found to the top left of the temperature at the top of the screen. You can also bind keyboard shortcuts to the game speed buttons in the settings menu. So standard is um, you hit 2 to decrease the speed and 3 to increase the speed. Um, the game will slow down to normal speed when something important happens as well as each day at 5 a.m. You can pause the game by pressing the space bar. Now construction. Use the construction menu at the bottom of the screen to order the construction or dismantling of buildings and streets. Only people who are not currently at work can build structures. Buildings inside the heat zone are warmer and provide better living and work conditions. To make the best use of the heat zone, buildings are placed on a radial grid. All buildings must be connected to the generator by a street in order to function. So this is kind of what I was explaining a bit earlier. Apparently, woodworkers use a variation of the flannel shirt made of compressed cotton, which is supposedly pretty good. Yeah, agreed. If you guys have flannel, it gets mandatory in this game. So, yeah, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Okay, see how this is, like, fast building now? We're cruising. We're cruising through time. Uh, Coal-wise, I think we're okay. Steel, we're going to need a little bit more. Uh, the next few things that I'm going to want to build are probably just tents. And these hold 10 people each. We have 80 people that are homeless. So you can do the math. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build enough to get like half. Half of our people. Alright, what do we got going on here? Oh, beautiful. Okay, no roof over our heads. So, Captain. People are understandably concerned about the lack of shelter. They're falling ill from sleeping outside in this terrible cold. We'd better do something about it. Okay, perfect. So... Um, we can say, like, oh, I'll provide some shelter, and we'll have two days to provide it for 40 people. Or we can say, you know what? I'm going to provide it for everybody. And I think what these exclamations mean is, like, people will be happy and, like, hope will increase if uh, we do this. If we do one that has three, I think hope goes up, like, a lot more or something like that. So... <laughs> Do you think- yeah, Vinny, I think this could definitely be like a five more minutes game. For sure. Like, for sure. I'm gonna commit to like, just providing some shelter, because I don't know if we're gonna be able to get eight tents up. So, I'm gonna- I'm gonna do this. We've already started building the four, which is nice. And we'll just keep rocking. High risk, high reward. Exactly. Yeah. And I think, like, one of the things that they've explained for this is that, um... This is a game about making difficult decisions, and every decision has a- has a trade-off, you know? So... Yeah. Um, we're cruising through a bunch of wood. I'm gonna, I'm gonna knock down... Like, we, we're amassing quite a bit. So I'm gonna knock this down just a tad. Let's go to 10 here. On this wood crate. And then we need to build... The Hunter's Hut as well. So I'm gonna place this over on this side. And if I wanted to, I could start building roads. So in here you can build, um, streets. And this will let us connect to the outer rings as well. Um... So yeah, let's do this. We'll push these out. And then those will get built over time. All right. Might as well put the kids to work on 24-hour shifts, too. I'm not a monster. <laughs> I'm not a total monster, Arvani's, you know? The kids work. But they're in safe jobs. It could be way worse. I could put them in the generator for heat if we needed to. Captain, when facing demands, remember this. People usually look for the quickest solutions, not the best one. You don't have to agree to everything they ask for. If you fix the problem your way, it's fine. All right. I'll bear that in mind. Thank you. Thank you. But just like look at look at how gorgeous this is. We got our first tent up. 
Look at that. It shows you all the specifics of people that live there. This one's... These go up pretty quickly, as you can see. And then we've got the uh, Hunter's Hut coming in about two hours. Now, Hunters! Uh, or sorry, I guess we didn't read the generator one. The generator is in the heart of the city and the only source of heat in this frozen hole. You should turn it on as soon as you can stockpile enough coal, which we've already done. Uh, the generator heats a circular zone around it, consuming at least six units of coal per hour. You can research generator upgrades that raise the heat output, expand the heat zone, and reduce coal usage. So we'll get there in a second. Uh, oh, Brocode, you, you had many 4 a.m. nights when you played the demo? I could imagine. It's very similar to, like, this war of mine, right? Where it's like, I'll just do, like, I'll just do one more night. I'll just do one more day. It's like, okay, I'll never stop. Hunters. Uh, leave the city to hunt in the Frostland for food. They work from 6 p.m. till 6 a.m. So these are, these guys work overnight. Uh, initially, they bring up to 15 units of raw food from each hunt. Research upgrades to significantly increase hunt yield. So we need to assign people to work here um, when it's done. All right. I will... I will want to build out additional um, tents for these guys. Because I don't want I don't want anybody to be homeless, you know? Not in my town, which I don't think has a name. Maybe it does, but I don't know what it is yet. Uh, the other things over here you'll notice, so we're on day one. You'll see that this, like, uh, looks like a ruler is kind of always sliding to the left. Um, there's some things that we'll see on here, so... On day four, our temperature is going to drop significantly. It's going to drop by two levels. That means uh, we're going to have to either pump out more heat or like watch people when they go out and they're probably going to get sick. So we want to consider having like some medical tents up in order to uh, deal with that. Everyone feels relieved with a roof, even a flapping one over their head. Hope rises. Good. We have one controversial law. Um, which is the child labor, obviously. People from our convoy. So with basic resources secured for now, we can try to rescue the people we left behind. Basically, we want to uh, build a beacon, scout Frostland, save as many survivors from our expedition as possible. You'll need a workshop to design plans for more advanced buildings. All right. So uh, let's make sure that we've got people in here. I've got 10 people that I can assign to this. Um, this is going to produce 10 raw food per day. And then in the cookhouse, we want to be cooking this food. So basically, we have to decide where are we going to take... Where are we going to take our, um, our people from? And I think I'm going to look for the children. Maybe the children can do the cooking. That's probably even safer. Is it not? I think so. Let's put our children in the cookhouse. Oh, we can only put five kids in. <laughs> That's too bad for them. All right. So the rest of them, they can go back here. Um, let's see. I can pull... Some of these workers off of there. And we can put them in here. So we're generating more raw food. And then it looks like we can only assign five here in total, which is all good. So this will be producing as fast as we possibly can. Am I going to cook the children? No. But maybe. <laughs> we'll, see how, we'll see how angry they make me. So I really like this. So when we hover over this bottom area, it's going to show us where all of our people are at. Um, as far as I can tell, I don't have a way to see... Oh, maybe I do in here, actually. Yeah, okay. Daily gain. Cool. So from coal... I guess maybe that's all that we can see. Is the coal pile. Basically what I'm wondering is... It... Oh, here, 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 here. Oh, cool. All right, so this is going to show us what our daily gain is for food processing, health statuses, housing conditions. Look, they're all comfortable. Steel and wood. There we go. So daily gain. Um, we're doing 60 wood per day, 40 steel per day. It's not bad. Oh, and it's a good summary over here. So that's actually quite helpful. I didn't see that before. How long till the next zombie horde? <laughs> it's funny, uh, Falstro asked me before, or didn't ask me. I was, uh, he was asking me about Frostpunk, and he said it kind of reminded him of, like, a cross between this war of mine and, uh, 
and um, they are billions. And I could see that. I could see that initial kind of reaction. What's up, Bearded Gamer? I'm doing good, man. Any horror games planned soon from uh, Cheyenne's asking? Uh, there's nothing really that I'm seeing that looks interesting, but I mean, if you find one, I'd love to check it out. All right. Illness and healthcare. So cold homes or workplaces cause people to get sick. Without proper care, they become they can become gravely ill and they might die. The sick can be treated in medical posts, which is like our most basic uh, medical building. But the gravely ill need an infirmary to be treated. So that's where like that bill could come into play. Do we want to do amputations and put them back out there, get to work with one arm? Or do we want to just keep them alive until we can uh, get an infirmary going? So that'll be a choice that we have to make. Until you build one, you can save their lives by signing one of two laws. Radical treatment allows you to treat the gravely ill, but some of them will be left as amputees. The sustained life law allows you to keep the gravely ill alive in medical posts or care houses indefinitely. Um, problem with that is that they take up space. So, yeah. So right now, we do have two people that are sick. Um, we're going to have to make a decision on, like, what do we prioritize? Do we want to get some of our production going and building like the workshop and get the beacon? Or do we want people to not be homeless and sick? And I think not homeless and sick is a pretty decent option, actually. Um, so let's connect this and then I'm going to go... Uh, I don't actually don't know if I can even assign that if I don't have the wood. So we're like 3 a.m. here. We have to wait till daytime to start producing. All right. Sometimes wonder what the purpose of our struggle is. Don't give up already, Henry. <laughs> Jesus. The city wakes up at about six o'clock. All right. People have some free time until the work shift starts at eight, unless there's construction. So if there's any construction to do, it's good to assign it at night, I guess, so that those first two hours aren't like wasted. Uh, after they finish their shift at six o'clock, they are free to help with construction again, which can keep them up well past midnight. You can extend the 10-hour work shift to sign certain laws. Okay. So... Which can keep them up well past midnight. I wonder if that means, like, once they start building, they will not stop until it's done after 6 p.m. There's a couple things we can do. After signing the extended shift and emergency shift laws, you can extend your people's work time. So this is the one where you can say, on this building, we're going to do 24 hours, or on this building, we're going to work a uh, different shift time, and uh, we can generate more from those. Okay. Alright. We need our guys to start bringing back some wood. Okay. Critical shortage. The number of sick is rising, and we don't have enough materials to build a medical post. Perhaps a short burst of effort could help us gather the necessary resources. So this is where it's saying we might want to consider an emergency shift. Um, I don't know if that's a good idea. It gets people really mad, you know? Gets people quite upset. I may just try to like reallocate some of our uh, some of our resources. So if we look at this health-wise for medical posts, it's just wood. I'm gonna take people off of steel production, I think. And okay, these are both coal. Do we have anybody on steel? Wait, I can find out here. Yeah, 40 per day. So, steel wreckage, take me to this one. And let's get rid of all of these engineers on there. And I'm going to throw them on any wood that they can get to. And we'll just try to, like, get a lot of wood going so we can get our roads. We can get, like, our basic necessities up. And then we will um, try and keep our people alive. Because that seems relatively important. All right. So we'll build the streets back this way. We can go all the way around, looks like. I don't know if I did that right. Totally fine with being dubbed as a weirdo. I am one without being dubbed as one. <laughs> Jesus. All right. What do we got here? Child, oh no. 
A child got distracted at work and has been injured. The accident was not serious and happened entirely due to the child's carelessness. <laughs> Give the kid a day off. Kid won't work for 24 hours. Hope will rise. Or we scold him and hope will fall. What do we do? <laughs> how, how funny is that? Wonder if there's a cannibalism law? Oh, I don't know. It could be. I'm not gonna eat the child. I'm not gonna- I'm gonna- I'm gonna- we're gonna be a nice dictator, okay? Guys, I can't believe how many of you just want to sacrifice children. I don't know if I feel safe here anymore. Uh, take the day off. You'll be fine, buddy. I should have checked his name. Uh, I might be able to. Look at this. Martha St. Leger. Very low risk of any ill. Um, <laughs> Martha, take the day off. Where's your- where are your parents? Molly. She works in the tents. Henry. Or sorry. Molly works in the wood crates. And so does her husband, Henry. Martha, their child, is at home. Relaxing. Alright. Let's do a medical post. And I think I'll put this out here. Cause like I don't have it I don't have enough space for it on the inner ring, unfortunately. So let's get that up and running. And then I need one more tent as well. Which I wish I would have placed on the inner ring because it's got the most heat, but hey. A cold home is better than no home, in my opinion. Look at our city really coming together. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Is there anything you guys want me to show you at this exact moment? While we're waiting? You'll notice we have tons of food rations, which is really good. Um, I mean, ideally, this is always max and this is always empty. I think. Unless we have people that are basically idle in the, uh, the cookhouse. You know what I mean? But we'll see. Hey, what's up, Aomami? Danny, what's going on? Banana. Oh, yeah, Banana says, can you zoom in all the way on the tent? So uh, this is as close as I can get. This is the closest zoom I can get. I really wish that we could get right in there because it's gorgeous, you know? Like, look at all the detail. How cool is that? It's really nice. It's really nice. All right. Uh, let's see what we're going to need for the workshop. Once the tent is built, or once the medical tent is built, we can assign people to work there and hopefully cure these two. Workforce-wise. Uh, let's see. Let's go back a bit. We saw that one. We saw the day-night. Okay. So, workforce. Some buildings, such as the medical post of the workshop, require intense mental labor from the people employed there. And as such, can only be staffed by engineers... Workers only provide manual labor. All right, so we need engineers to work at like the medical tents. Children can't be employed at all initially. Uh, you can check your workforce distribution by clicking on the icon in the bottom right corner. Are you able to make it past day 10? I have no idea. Is that like a hard thing to do? It might be. I have no idea. I'm on day two and I'm pretty happy about it. <laughs> I'm pretty happy. And actually things are going like, okay, we have no discontent. Uh, hope is fine. And, like, we're kind of doing alright so far. Now, uh, tech-wise, we need this workshop. We need five steel for this, which we have. Uh, I could probably build this out here. Now, this is one thing I don't know. I don't know if placement matters. Like, this is in... You see how we're basically all these tents? And then we've got the, um... Uh, the workshop that we're gonna build behind. I don't know if that's, like, a hindrance to us. Or if we should keep it, like... Maybe we should keep this back in the industrial area of things. You know what I'm saying? I have no idea. Uh, it, there could be like a travel time impact. But as of now, I'm not 100% sure. We'll get that going anyway. Okay, here's our medical post. I need to pull off some engineers that are currently not doing a whole lot. Oh, cool. If we check them, that stays on. Ooh, I like that. I like that. Alright, so we'll pull these guys off here. And over on the medical tent. 
Let's employ these. Now, I don't know at what rate we heal people, and that's something I'll probably need to learn. But, like, if I assign five here, is that overkill for two people? Maybe I only need one per sick, per sick person. You know? They're being treated. So, let's see. Going to work, going to work. Going to treatment, going to treatment. You can rotate buildings. Oh, really? How do you do that? I don't know why you would rotate buildings, because everything's building from the way out. Not sure. Not sure. Okay, anyways, workshop's coming. Then we can start doing research. Uh, use the workshop to develop new buildings and improvements. You can boost research speed by building several workshops. So, um, at one workshop is 100% research. Up to four workshops, you get 160% on your research speed. Seems like a big investment. Uh, research is grouped into tiers. You have to research a tier upgrade before you can start researching technology in that tier. Researching each topic costs resources and takes time. Okay. Okay. What temperature building... Uh, what temperature buildings work on? Or do buildings stop working at certain temperatures? Some do, I think. So, um, you can see here, temperature's comfortable because it has insulation, this workshop, and it prevents people... People that work there probably won't get ill. If we look at, like, um, the cookhouse, it's plus one because of the zone that it's in. It's in zone one, right next to the generator. Uh, and it has plus one for insulation. This one uh, has two insulation plus one heat zone. So, like, that's something for me to learn. Um, where things that have better insulation can be a little bit further out. Whereas, I imagine tents... Yeah. See, they have one insulation. And if I look at our... the, I think we placed one tent out behind. You'll notice. It's livable. And they have a very low risk of getting ill, but they can still get ill. Whereas the tents on the inner ring, they're just not going to get ill at all. Does that make sense? So, yeah. The visual at the top right is cool. You mean, like, uh, this for each building or this thing here? I think they've done a really good job, like, with the aesthetics right off the bat. It's, like, really, really nice. All right. Um, workers. We need to assign engineers. Let's get some more of our engineers off of the off of the wood piles and let's put them in here and now we can do research so we've got uh, four areas heating exploration and industry resources food health and shelter and then like a billion options underneath hey possum what's up dude <laughs> I am building all the things yeah exactly <laughs> I just build everything hope for the best um, these steam cores come into play at later levels, I believe. But the other resources that get used in the tech trees are the uh, wood and the steel. So we can improve on our heating if we wanted to build steam hubs um, or heaters. Exploration and industry. This is the beacon that it's asking us to build. I want to prioritize this because that will allow us to um, go and gather more people. Resources. We can gather faster, which I think is really beneficial. We can do a coal thumper, which allows us um, to, like, generate more coal. A sawmill and steelworks. These things we place out at the outer perimeters of the map uh, on those resources uh, areas. And then we can start gathering. And then food, health, and shelter. Hunter's gear. Uh, thanks to better snowshoes and enhanced camouflage. Hunters getting out of the hunter's hut will return with more raw food from each hunt. So I don't know if we need this yet. Food-wise, we seem to be doing fine. I think. I think we're doing good. But if we're able to bring back more people, we might need to improve our um, we might need to improve our food production. So that would be like a good way to do it. Uh, but for now, I'm going to do the beacon. And this will allow us to send out scouts to different locations. It's super cool, actually. Super cool. More slaves. <laughs> we're not slaves. We're saving them, you guys. We're saving them. Come on. They're, mu they're much better off here than, like, look at... Also, like, how cool is that? You find this little, like, or dig or what? I don't actually know how they got here yet. Uh, like, you come down here and you start building up this, like, steampunk city. 
Oh, it's so cool, man. Like, kind of protected from the elements. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's just, it's just awesome. I'll need to see about saving when shove comes to push. <laughs> I've never heard it said like that, but yeah. Yeah, you're right. We will see what happens. We will see. I would love to be able to name these guys. Uh, I think that would be so cool. Just, you'd become so attached, you know? So attached. So attached. Alright, what do we got here? Protective mother. A mother ha this would be my mom. A, a mother has refused to let her daughter go to work, afraid she'll get injured. We could look the other way this time, but others might see it as unfair. I see the- I see- okay. So I get it. Protective mother. But, if we're- if we say that she can take it off, they're gonna have all these parents coming and say, My kid needs this and that, I'm gonna be like, Sorry kids, everyone's gotta work, alright? I'm not- I'm not gonna make an exception. I'm gonna be... Firm but fair. You know? We signed the bill, the kids are working. Every kid must work. Every kid must work. <laughs> Yeah, thumbs up or thumbs down. Like, I'm just sitting at the top of our, like, fusion reactor. I'm just like, no. But let's see what happens. We'll see if we get any negative out of that. Uh, beacon. Research. Do, how do we see... Oh, it's closed anyway, so whatever. Work time. See, now, rations here, we're not generating any, but it's fine because we have ton... Or, sorry, uh, raw food, we're not generating any. But it's fine because we have a ton of rations, you know? Can you change the laws later when you no longer need child labor? I mean, honestly, great question. That's a great question. I don't know. I think once it's in there, it's in there. And it looks like this did answer my question. Because, uh... They're in the safe jobs. I don't know if I can ever get to this one now. Whereas if we would have chosen the other one where we put the kids in like a shelter, Looks like they could have become medic apprentices and engineer apprentices. Um, but eventually, we could say child labor all jobs if we want. Um, and so the ones that are split, I think that's kind of confirming this is an either or decision and you will not be able to go back on it. Uh, the ones that are like the full circle, like emergency shift or fighting arena, it is what it is. So kind of interesting. This will eventually get us to be more like regular workers. Um, but I think longer term, like if I could do it again, knowing that, it would have made more sense longer term to put them in like the safe shelter and then make them medic apprentices and engineer apprentices. But I guess like either way, you know, early versus late, it is what it is, so. All right. Ah, uh, Purple Haze, thanks for the bits, man. Thank you so much. Pruggles, thanks as well, man. I appreciate it, guys. Thanks. I know there's a lot of, uh, a lot of subs and stuff, too, and I'll, I'll take a break in a bit, and I'll definitely go through all of them. I really, I really do appreciate it. Thank you so much, you guys. That's really cool. Very kind. Thank you. Bitlords, Vinny says. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The Bitlords are here. Alright, how are people doing? Let's just take a look at the economy. How are we doing? Look. Uh... Wood gain, wood use. So this is kind of interesting. Steel gain, steel use. How are these lines? What is this? Like, is this... This must be the steel, and this must be the wood. This is the wood use, and this is the steel use. This little bit here. Coal management. As long as we're in the green here, we're laughing. You know? And I might even consider pulling people off of there, I think. That's possible. <laughs> False journal. Oh, my man. Thank you so much, dude. Nice and subtle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like it. Okay. Um, How's everyone doing? Everyone's good. Medic-wise, everyone's chilling. Okay, so you know what's cool? Three people being treated. Let's try an experiment here in a medical post. Let's drop this down. That frees up two engineers. Wood crates are depleted. Alright. So now we have, like... A bunch of idle engineers and idle workers. Let's find... Another... 
wood pile. If we have any. Yeah, here we go. Let's do like that. And they can go work that for now. And we'll see what happens here with these three being treated. I don't know if it's like a one-to-one. -one. Uh, let me take a closer look, maybe. Medical post, workers, patients. Yeah, I don't know. We can also just turn it off, like if nobody's sick, might be a decent idea. It freezes up two engineers? Yeah, I see what you did there. But like, honestly though, how cool is this? This, okay, well that's good timing. But how cool is it that you see their tracks like go out there to where they're working? And then, when, like, overnight, it starts, it fills back up because it's constantly, like, just terrible outside. Like, how cool is that? <laughs> that they had you said, I have to mention that this reactor looks so inefficient, like, so much heat is wasted, just nonsense. Yeah. I mean, but visually, it looks cool, and that's what really matters. Family torn apart. Sir. A woman came forward after we built the workshop. She said that her husband and daughter didn't reach the city with the main group. But she's sure that they're still out there. She wants to join the first scout team we send out. And she urges you to hurry. Okay, we'll do what we can. We're trying. We're getting there. We're getting there. Snow on the rooftops is a visual indication of how cold the place is. Alternatively, hit the central temperature button. Oh, the snow on the work worked uh, on the top. That's cool. I don't think I ever would have noticed that. I was showing this earlier. So, like, anything red is, like comfortable you know yellow livable everywhere else chilly and eventually like so uh n tomorrow we're gonna have the temperature drop quite a bit and we'll probably send this sucker into overdrive and we'll see how we do there you know uh right now i'm basically waiting for the beacon to just finish i think that's like the main goal the other thing uh the book of laws is on like a cooldown so i don't know if we need to be like spamming in laws here some of them are good some of them are not so good um and i think the idea for me anyways is to wait um until we're in a situation where we need to do it you know i could argue that maybe building like the fighting arena right now would be cool um yeah we got to build it but everyone's like chilling out um discontent gets reduced things like that and then um we can't pass a law for another day and a half and the only problem with that is that we have that cold spell coming. So I'm thinking maybe we wait for that cold spell, see if there's anything special that we need to do there. You know? Okay. Beacon is live. Let's build the beacon. Hey, little June. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you so much for the bits. You guys... I mean, okay. I hate, I hate to talk about this stuff, but like... Um... A Amazon, well, I guess Amazon and Twitch are doing a sale on bits. So it's a one-time thing where if you buy 500 bits, you get it for like a buck or two, which is actually insane. Because um, it's basically like you spend $1 and you get $5 worth, which is pretty cool. It's a one-time thing. I don't know how long it lasts. They haven't publicized it much. It's pretty cool, though. Um, okay, hold on. What do we want to do next in here? I think faster gathering, maybe, might be good. Or we could start with the hunter's gear, because we know we're going to bring back more people with that beacon. Let's do that. Let's do that. Here's the beacon. 20 wood, 35 steel. So that's going to put our steel quite a ways down. But that's okay. Um, I could tuck this... No, I can't even tuck this in there. Uh, does it show us, actually... Hold on. I want to know if it shows us what its insulation is. Just out of curiosity. It doesn't seem to. Until we place it, probably. So we'll see. Look at the top of the medic building video. Hold on. Hold on. Let's check it out. Um, right here. You mean this? Oh, efficiency. Ah, cool. So, it's at 67% efficiency. Fine. Uh, 
But I still don't know if that's like if because you see how we've got those three people being treated. I mean, it seems to be we seem to be doing okay. All right, beacon's done. That's cool. Cool. Let's get this sucker built. Coal pile is out. Okay, we have a whole bunch of workers freed up over the last couple seconds here. So, let's get into more steel. Out here. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks, dear, uh, dear pun office. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's like, it's crazy. It's like free money, which is, you know, Amazon seems to like doing that kind of stuff. I appreciate, I appreciate that. Thanks, man. I hope they keep me warm as well. Okay, let's do... Max out workers on the wood crates there. We still have more wood crates out here. Wood-wise, we're doing okay. But where we're falling behind is with the, um... With that. So we have one child that's not doing anything. Where are the rest of the children? Here, I'll send the other child out with the rest so they can all play together. See, I'm a nice guy, you guys. I'm a nice guy. I'm a nice dictator. And we've depleted those wood crates. Cool. Kitties? Here you go. Enjoy. Beacons built. We're no longer lost and blind. From now on, our people will be able to survey the icy barrens that surround us. The Frostland. So this is sick. Check this out. Look at the edges of the screen. Look at this. Like, it's subtle, but it makes such a huge difference. It's so cool. So cool. Alright, the beacon. Check this out. Okay. Oh, it wants to tell us about weather first, so let's do that. The temperature of the city is constantly changing. Pay close attention to the forecast for the next five days. It is shown to the right of the temperature at the top of the screen. A thermometer icon indicates the direction of the temperature change. Hover the mouse over it for details. When it gets colder outside, the temperature inside buildings drops as well. Obviously. Buildings differ in the amount of protection they offer from the cold. To see all the factors affecting temperature in a building, hover the mouse over the thermometer icon in the panel. Which we did. When it gets colder outside, the temperature inside buildings drops as well. Buildings differ in the amount of protection they offer from the cold. To see all the factors affecting temperature in a building, hover the mouse over the thermometer icon. Got it. Beacon. So this gives us access to the world outside the city. You can explore it with scouts deployed through the beacon panel. Um, it allows you to explore the frost line with scouts. This is what the panel looks like. Scouts are self-sufficient and can venture great distances from the city. They may find precious resources, survivors, and perhaps shed light on the world and its fate. The progress of your scouts is shown through the icons in the upper right corner. Deploy scouts, select the side icon, and click on the green arrow button. Okay. So, as of right now, like, if I go here, um, I don't have any scouts to actually send there. Um, but we have two places. So, we have a crash site, several wrecked vehicles, and I think these are, like, all of this is randomized. Uh, those little event, like, pop-ups are randomized. Um... These, like, different sites that we can go and explore, randomized, minus probably this Lost Expedition one, because it's part of, like, a main quest, right? Um, so, crash site, several wrecked vehicles, no signs of life, probably our machines, let's hope so. We had to leave a number of supplies in them after the crash, so supplies. And then expedition, numerous tents, we can see people moving, must be lost members of our expedition. So that's the one we're going to try to prioritize. Um, well, let's go to the beacon here. And we need to build a, uh, or create a scout. But we need five workers and 40 wood to do so. So let's look at where we could free up some workers. We'll pull from... Maybe not the steel pile. Maybe not the child pile. But let's grab, uh, five workers from here. And let's make a scout. So now, we have a scout available. Lost Expedition. 11 hours. Boom! Rescue survivors from our lost expedition. That could be good. Could be good. And you can also, like, zoom. So if I, uh, if I'm, like, zoomed right into the city, just by scrolling out, you can zoom out to, like, the, the world view. But, like, look at this.
Like, there is no hope out here. <laughs> you know? This is, like, straight up depressing. Straight up depressing. Children are perfect for scouting? I actually don't know if they could- can they do that? I should have checked, actually. I should have checked. And you can- I guess you can see their progress, but whatever. 